Let's say we have this set with one and two, and also this set with one, two, and three. And you can notice that every element in this set is also in this set. One is an element in here, and also an element in here. Two is an element in here, and also an element in here. And so that means the set with one and two is a subset of the set with one, two, and three. So we write it down this way. We say that the set containing one and two is a subset of the set containing one, two, and three. What if we had the set one and four and the set one, two, and three again? So one is an element of this set and also this set, but four is only an element of this set and not of this set. So in this case, this set is not a subset of this set. So this set is not a subset of that set. What if we had this set one and two and this set one and two? So every element in one and two is also in one and two. So this set is a subset of that set. And you could also go the other direction. Every element in this set is also in that set. And when this happens, when two sets are both subsets of each other, they're called equal. So we say the set containing one and two is equal to the set containing one and two. Um, what about the empty set? What if we had the empty set and the set one and three? Um, is the empty set a subset of this set containing one and three? And the answer is yes, it is. So if the empty set was not a subset of this set with one and three, then there would be something in here that's not in here. But there's nothing at all in here, so that's impossible. So um, this is a subset of one and three. And now we can get to the power set. So let's say we had some set X. Then the power set of X, notated this way, the power set of X, is the set of all subsets of X. So the set S, where S is a subset of X. So, for example, what would be the power set of the set containing one? So that would be um, all the subsets of the set containing one. So the empty set is a subset of the set containing one and so is the set with one. And those are all the subsets of the set containing one. So this is the power set of the set containing one. So what about the power set of the set containing one and two? So that would be, again, the empty set is a subset of everything. Uh, the set containing one is a subset of one and two. The set containing two is also a subset of the set containing one and two. And finally, the entire set itself, one and two, is a subset of itself. So this is the power set of the set containing one and two. Uh, what about the power set of the empty set? So, um, there can't be anything in a subset of the empty set. So that means there's only one possible subset of the empty set, and that's the empty set itself. Let's say we had a set with three elements, like the set containing one, two, and three. How many elements are in the power set of this set? So how many elements are in here? power set of one, two, and three. 
for each element in here, we can choose whether or not we want to include it in a subset. So if I'm listing all the subsets of 1, 2, and 3, um, for each element in here, I can choose um, does it belong in this subset or not. So I have this set where I don't choose 1, I don't choose 2, I don't choose 3, and that's the empty set. And then I could have the set where I choose 1, I don't choose 2, I don't choose 3, and that's just the set containing 1. And I could have this set where I don't choose 1, I do choose 3, and I don't choose 2. I'd be the set containing just 3, and, and so on. And so for each of these elements, I can make an independent choice about whether or not I want to include it in a subset. So that's two choices for each element. So I have two times two times two ways to form a subset out of this set. And that's two to the three ways to form a subset of one, two, and three. And so in general, if I had a set uh, with n elements, if I had this set 1, 2, 3, all the way up to n, or any other set with n elements, then in that case, the power set of this set would have 2 to the n elements.